Cat Williams been talking, man. And okay. he came for everybody. He came for everybody. He came for everybody from you know? Steve Harvey to Kevin Hart yeah. to yeah. Cedric the Entertainer yeah. to yeah. whoever, you name it. You, you've worked with Jamie Foxx. All these rumors about what happens in Hollywood and the things that you got to do to yeah. be able to make it. Yeah. Yeah. You got to sell your soul. You've got to do, the, you got to become gay. You got to suck some. I've seen things. I've heard things. I was actually a physical producer on Rambo, and I took it to another level with bringing finance into us homeless in New York City oh, man. for about six and a half months. You have to believe in something that you can't see, but that's the pure definition of faith. What's going on, people? This is your boy, Michael O, your chief motivational officer. Listen, I am excited to bring you a brand new podcast, Moving Mountains, hosted by myself. Find me on Spotify, find us on iTunes, find us on YouTube. Connect with us, Moving Mountains Podcast. What's going on, people? Welcome to the Moving Mountains Podcast. I am your host, Michael O. Welcome to another episode filled with gems, filled with some good stuff for you guys. You know me, I'm always bringing you guests that will give you practical tools to be able to help you get from where you are to where you want to go. And for me, you know, one thing that I've noticed for us, we're not lacking of talent. We're not lacking of gifts. We're not lacking of creativity. It's just a lot of the time we're lacking the confidence to be able to go out there and share our gifts with the world. And my guest today, oh my gosh, that my guest today has gone and done just that, right? So I'm going to be bringing out of him the things, the tools that have um, helped him to be able to hone his skills and be able to go out there and work with some of the best of the best in Hollywood. Let me give you a little, a little uh, background about him. So he's a Hollywood sensation. Right. He's risen up the ranks in Hollywood from being an actor and writer to now a producer and executive producer, being the first African-American to join the ranks of executive producer on Sylvester Stallone's Rambo, The Last Blood. I absolutely love that film. I think I came, it came out in 2019. And he's also served as executive producer on the biopic about Nikola Tesla's life which was released in 2020 called Tesla. My guest today, Elijah Long, has written and produced for Paramount Pictures, Ciroc, and even Jamie fucking Fox. You get me? He Today, I'm going to get him to share some of those principles, like I said, and how you can trust and believe in your creativity and your gifts to be able to go out there and share it with the world. Did you like that intro, brother? Brother. <laughs> you like that? I don't know. Who 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 are you introing, bro? <laughs> Damn. That's a hell of an intro, man. Thank you, man. Come I on, appreciate bro. you it's so much, Michael. It's all facts. Thank it's all you, facts. Brother. Welcome thank to you. the Moving Mountains podcast, brother. Man, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Come really on. Appreciate Come it. on. Listen, I love your journey. I love what you've gone out there and done. For me, I'm always wanting to bring people who have gone in there got out there and done the, done the work, mm -hmm. have got the credits for mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. so that you can come and show us how you did it, mm -hmm. right? I want to educate my, my, my audience a little bit. Okay. What is the practical difference between a producer and an executive producer on a project? Let me start with that because this is something mm. that, I, I've been in the industry for a minute, but this is something that I need some mm. clarity of myself. You, you know what? I, I actually get that a lot. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not just between the producers, the different kind of producers, but I get that a lot in regards to What's the difference between a director and a producer? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know, so many and, different and titles. So many different titles. Um, there are so many different levels of producers, starting yeah. at associate producer to co-producer to line producer. Like everyone has their specific job. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. When I was doing music videos, it was creative producer Got because it. you're not only writing the treatments. I'm also doing the budgeting. I'm also hiring the staff. I'm and also the treatment is the storyline, right? Of the storyline of the video. The you know every project should have a beginning, middle, and end, yeah. regardless if it's a music video, or whatever, what it may be. Yeah. But the difference, specifically with a executive producer and a producer on the film, a couple of different things. I'll give Rambo as an example. I was a producer on the actual project. I was a co-producer on the actual project. However, the film actually needed funding as well, and I brought funding to that. There so that go. takes you from producer to executive, executive producer. producer status. Typically, when you see that title, executive producer, executive producers associated with the money, executive producers also associated associated with the studio or network, potentially yeah. distributors. Yeah. You know, you might have put a deal together. Uh, one of my mentors, Will Packer, he was an executive producer on, uh, I don't know why the name slips me, with the the film with Dr. Dre, and it was about uh, um, 
how does this how does this film slip me? It's a classic. Um, uh, what's the film? What's the with film? With Dr. Dre. With, with it's it, it's the story of Dr. Dre, Ice Cube. Oh 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 yes. Um, uh, See, we're both straight out of Compton. Straight out of Compton. Straight out of Compton. Oh Compton. That's God. it. Straight out of Compton. Oh my God. So <laughs> so uh, he he's telling me about this project, and I'm like, Will, congratulations. He said, Bro, I did very little on that film at the particular time. The project was at another studio. Will help facilitate it to Universal executive producer got credit. It. So it's those little nuances that you know can can get somebody an executive it, producer credit. But I was actually a physical producer on Rambo, and I took it to another level with bringing finance into it. Fantastic! Of, of, of I'm glad we got that out of the way. Aren't you glad we got that out of the way, <laughs> <laughs> bro? Let me take it back a little bit because you're you're an actor. Mm -hmm. You're a writer, mm -hmm. of course, now a producer and executive producer. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, what I've I've spoken to so many people who have ideas. Because mm. ideas are a dime a dozen, mm. aren't they? Everybody's got an idea. Ideas right? without execution are just dreams. There we go. Ooh. That's it. That's a fact. <laughs> ideas without execution are it's just, just dreams. dreams. Um and and with a lot of people. So you you came up from Chicago, yes. then going into Hollywood to try to pave your way. Right. With a lot of people, it, it's not so started much started before that, but you started Indeed. you started doing movies even before you went to Hollywood. No, it's it, the, the the vision started the vision. before that. Tell me, tell me. I want to know about where you came into yourself to be able to know that this is my gift, this is my talent, this is what I want to do, and to be able to find the ways and actually to be able to materialize and manifest that to the point where you are now. Because I always want to find out the journey. I always want to find out, I always want to pick out the principles, the lessons mm -hmm. that we can apply in our own journey, Absolutely. regardless of how similar or different that might be, Absolutely. to be able to get to the finish line that we're trying to get to. Absolutely. Well, I will say this, no, no vision comes or no journey comes without the roadblocks. Mm. Because a lot of times you may have the vision, but you don't know how to get there. Absolutely. And that was my case. All Everybody's I, case. Everybody's <laughs> case. Right. So all I knew is that I wasn't a nine to five guy. I wasn't a college dude. I can't sit in anybody's classroom and learn some stuff that I know I'm not gonna use. So I said, I know I wanna go to LA. I can't afford to go to LA. How can I get to LA? Right. I'm gonna join the Navy. Okay. I'm gonna join the Navy. That's a detour. Interesting. I got stationed in San Diego purposely okay. because you you have two choices, East Coast or West Coast. And I right. picked West Coast and everything, you know, was lying in that way. And I had a aunt who was a captain in the Navy at the time. And I said, I, I have to be stationed in San Diego. I said, if you can pull any strings, just make that happen. Boom. She made it happen. I'm stationed in San Diego. I'm going back and forth every weekend. And this was my kind of baby cradling me into Los Angeles because. Because yeah. San I, Diego is in California. It is in California. Right. So I'm what? four hours yeah. away from LA. Yeah. So that's a quick drive on the five freeway, hit up to 405 and boom, I'm in LA. Yeah. So that was kind of like my journey, my weekend journey. I got a lot of tickets in between that. That's like driving in between Dubai and yeah. Abu Dhabi. I got a lot of tickets <laughs> in between there, brother. And so um, that was kind of like my my, my journey. I, I, I wasn't able to really full-fledged get jobs and different things because of my obligations still in the Navy, yeah. but I was able to see the city. Mm. I was able to feel the city. I was able to meet some people. Mm. And that's typically how the journey started for me. And then I got out of the Navy, moved back home for about two, three months. And then I went to New York City. And that's where the real journey began. That's when okay. I was homeless in New York City oh, man. for about six and a half months. Oh, um, man. You know, but that, that's a that's a story of a lot of actors homeless, sleeping in the car. You know, you do the whole thing. But at the time... So when you're homeless mm -hmm. and sleeping in the car, I don't know, mm -hmm. can you not get a part-time job to facilitate it? Is it because you're so fully occupied? Uh, uh, no, tell me tell me you, how this that you, works. Because I've heard this story yeah. in America so many yeah, times yeah, with yeah, people yeah. getting homeless. You, you have to realize this. And I'm, I'm aging myself, but I don't care. I look good. Uh, Come I'm, on, bro. I'm 44. <laughs> yeah. There was no internet. Right, like that, right? you right, know, right, you lucky you had a cell phone. Mm. So there wasn't this whole connectivity that you have around the world with, I can link up with this person and that person. It, it, it wasn't like that. Mm. So I had 
Backstage Magazine that will let you know all of the productions that are going on around the city. Got it. And you find out where you can do what. Yeah. I can make money doing a music video. Got it. I can make money doing, uh, okay, working over here. I worked at a hair salon for a while. I was sweeping up hair. Shit. And I'll tell you this, I was sweeping up hair in New York City. And guess who comes in the barbershop? Mickey Carter. Mickey Carter is Jay-Z's sister. Got them. I, I'm sweeping up, you know, doing and, 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 and my boss at the particular time, he tells me who it is. So I show her my book. I was trying to get in entertainment by any way, by any means, any possible. means necessary. And so I showed her my book and she said uh, it was my modeling book. And uh, she said, yeah, come by the office. And she gave me my first job in entertainment, which was uh, well, actually my second job in entertainment, which was for modeling for Rock Aware. So I did a little show so, for Rock Aware. As you continue to tell your story, I'm just going to come and just pull out at some interject Please. interjections Please. because I think it's super important to stay true to the vision, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. I always say that there comes a vision. Absolutely. There comes a struggle. Mm -hmm. And then there comes a manifestation. Mm. The majority of people give up in the struggle part mm. because... You want to go into Hollywood. You want to work in film. You want to work in movies. You want to, this is the dream that you want to follow. It leads you to being homeless. It leads you to sweeping the hairs in the, you know, in the barbershop and hair salon and all of that. This is where most people, this is where it makes sense to give up. Right. Right. And, right. and if you gave up at that point, nobody's going to blame you right. for not wanting to sleep in your car. There's right. absolutely nothing glamorous right. that's a, or that's, exciting. That's an easy scapegoat. Okay. However, 90% mm -hmm. of the people that fail or quit are employed by the 3% that didn't quit. 100%. So what is it about the strength and the, 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 the power of your dreams that you don't want to give up at this point? Because at this point, there is no evidence to say that this is going to work out 100%, for you. 100%. 100%. To be in entertainment, period, you got to be a little bit crazy. Fact. You know? Listen, let me rephrase that. Mm -hmm. To succeed in anything at the highest level, you've got to be you a little bit crazy. You have to be crazy. a little bit crazy yeah. because you have to believe in something that you can't see, but that's the pure definition of faith. Absolutely. So with that being said... We all have faith to believe that we're going to wake up the next morning. We have faith to believe that, you know, whatever we want is going to actually happen. However, you have two choices. You can either move forward in faith or have a 100% guarantee you're not going to succeed if you don't even try it. Come on now. So I'd rather have that little bit of inkling of chance or look to the right and say, well, I know what that looks like. Yeah. I don't want that. Right. So let me at least try. Right. You know, and, and I always tell myself and I tell anybody that is listening to the sound of my voice. If you're going to step forward to do anything, there is no way that you're not going to hit any kind of roadblocks there. Anything worth worth having, you, you, you're going to work for it. Absolutely. And so I, I, I figure, why not work for something that I want? Right. And, you know, I, I took a bet on myself and I'd rather take a bet on myself than leave my life in the hands of, Absolutely. you know, whether, whatever job is going to give me a nine to five paycheck. Absolutely. Because, you know, that's a that's a slow way of dying. Yeah. You know, I hate when people come home every day and it's like, I hate my job. Yep. I hate the and then you go, go do it with. all over again the next day. It's like, what you, kind of life is that? Yeah, what kind of living? life is that? Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like, I just I couldn't do that to myself. Yeah. And so um, I said, I'd rather struggle for as long as I need to struggle and reach my goal at the end. Yeah. And I always told myself, I want to die empty. I want to die empty. Come I want to die having tried everything yeah. that I ever wanted to where when I'm laying on that bed and I'm looking up at the upper room, yeah. it's like, Hey, we, we did it all, Absolutely. you know, and well, all, those, say, all those, those thoughts it. are running through your mind and you like, I, I tried everything I Come ever on. wanted to try, yep. you know, I jumped off cliffs, I jumped out of planes, I, I did everything. Yep. So yep. no regrets. I love it. I love no it. Well, regrets. they say, they say the grave, the graveyard is the most, is the wealthiest place on the planet mm. because all these dreams mm. that just went to die, went to die because people did not 
have the gumture to follow through and follow you know on their guts mm. follow when was that break when was that breakthrough point for you between when you were a struggling aspiring actor producer mm. writer mm. to when you were like okay f- I'm finally I'm finally getting somewhere with it you know what <laughs> I didn't know I wanted to be a writer I didn't know I wanted to be a producer I didn't know I wanted to be an actor so what were you pursuing my whole career started off in music ah yeah, I started off in music. I was I was uh, writing music for very established artists in New York City. I was gearing into the acting world, but I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I just knew I wanted to do entertainment, and I wasn't a nine to five guy. Got it. And I wanted to do something that where I found my passion, and I slowly found my passion. The reason why I started producing is because I started writing. The reason why I started writing is because in between little acting jobs, you broke. Yeah. And and and, and actors don't do nothing but do this. Right. Handout. Writers actually create scripts that turn into jobs. So I said, let me write myself something. Maybe somebody will, you know, buy it, jump into it. And that actually keeps you sane in between those jobs. And once I write something, I let a few people read it. And they're like, bro, this is good. I'm like, okay, how do I get this on the screen? You learn how to produce as you go. And that's what producing is. It's taking that hundred sheets of paper and turn it into something that you see on the screen. Everything that you do in between that is producing. Yeah. Getting your friends to be a part of it. Those are the actors. Okay, I, asking your buddy that used to do film school in, in, in college. Hey, can you hold the camera? Yeah. Hey, grab one of your buddies to hold the microphone. Like, And you get it done. This is how you can showcase that you have the talent or the skill to be on that next level. And if you don't believe in yourself, you know, this was like Jay-Z selling, you know, or Master P selling records out the back of the car. And you do whatever you need to do to make it happen. They told Jay-Z no. Yes, of course. You know, yeah, they told yeah, Michael yeah. Jordan no. He <laughs> could, didn't make the Southmore basketball team. You know, so if all of these people were told no, you know, who is Elijah Long? They told me no. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, and so it's 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 the tenacity that takes you to the and, next and, level. And that and that no, I, I continue to say it's uh it doesn't stop. Hmm. Right. Never so stops. so in, in the UK we I still ha- hear no. Right. Okay. So in the UK we have football, mm. right? <clears throat> Not the American football, what you mm-hmm. call soccer. Soccer, I know what so, you mean. So in, in soccer, you have you have you have your second division, you have your first division, yeah. you have your premiership, and then you have your championship teams. Okay. Right? When you go from second division and you are at the top of the you are the top of the charts, and you go into the first division, mm. you're starting from the bottom. Mm. When you go from the first division to the premiership team, you're starting from the bottom again. Mm. Mm. You become a nobody again. Mm. When mm. you go from premiership to championship, well, you're in that you're in the who's who's. Mm. You still mm. don't matter. 100%. Right? 100%. Even though that your trajectory of success has grown, yeah. has improved, yeah. you keep stepping into new heights where in this space, you don't matter. Mm. Right? And I keep saying to people, I'm like, that, that no, the no's do become easier as you get along, but they don't cease. It's just a journey of continuous overcoming Mm, mm. at various different stages, right? Because you raise 5 million to do a movie. Mm -hmm. Now you are at the point where you want to film, do a film that's going to require a hundred million. That's a different kind of, that's a different level. That's a different kind of level. Magic Johnson says something. He's a basketball player out of of America. (laughs) He said, people get upset with him now. You know, he's hit billionaire status. Yeah. People get upset with him now when they come to him with a, a, a million dollar, two million, five million, ten million dollar deal. And he says, nah, I'm good. I'm like, bro, it's ten million dollars. He said, I'm going to tell you why. It takes me the same amount of effort 
to make $10 million as it does to make a billion dollars or a hundred million dollars or whatever it may be. So why would I spend the time doing a $10 million deal? Because that's big to you. Absolutely. Versus the hundred million dollar deal. That's going to be worth my while and take me to the next level. So with that being said, I get a lot of people that DM me, send me messages and they're like, Hey, I got got this script. I got, I I got this. And I'm like, bro, that's amazing. And you should do it. Yeah. Because if I go from Rambo and then I go and I do your film, that's not helping my career elevate. Absolutely. I, ca- I came from that level. I will give you all the advice. I will lend you resources. I will whatever yeah. to help you succeed. Yeah. But I can't put my time and energy Absolutely. into that because it helps you grow, yeah. but it doesn't help me grow. Yeah. I always say this one line. I say, it is okay to be used, but it's not okay to be useless. Yes. And allowing yourself to be used has to be mutually beneficial. Absolutely. And I don't mind helping you. Mm -hmm. Guess what? He up there may not mind helping me get up. Yep. But it has to be mutually beneficial. Absolutely. You know, if I'm not adding any value to it, I don't expect him to pull me up. Yeah. You know, and, and and you're pulling me down by making me fall. But it's 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 not mutually beneficial. Listen, so you I, have to choose I, your time wisely. I fully agree yeah. with with what with that principle of, of what you said about Magic Johnson. Because I always say that you eat at the level of your vision. One hundred percent. Right? It it doesn't require any more. 100%. To be able to pursue a million than it does a hundred million. million exactly. The reality is it's all boils down to the level of your vision. 100%. Right. That's 100%. what you're going to, that's where it's going. That's where you're going to eat at. Absolutely. Right. The, Absolutely. the, the, uh, the tortoise or the turtle mm. and the giraffe mm. both eat leaves. Mm. Mm. The difference is one of them eats the leaves at the bottom of the tree. Mm. The other one eats the leaves at the top of the tree. 100%. 100 percent right 100%. but it, but it's the journey you've got to yeah. you've got to know where you are right and you've got to follow your trajectory of growth right right right, right. I, I i love this line uh a rapper named talib kwali said this he says it's impossible to please everybody at the same time absolutely so it doesn't matter when you start pleasing the upper level individuals you're going to be pissing the lower level level individuals off because you're not available to help them yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just put it like this. If you are surrounded by people who are stale faced because you are not helping them at that level and they don't want to see you elevate, you're in the wrong rooms. Man, it's crazy. I, this literally hit me yesterday. Mm-hmm. So uh, um, the, last year, this girl, Tyler, South African girl, okay. with the song so Water. So proud of her, by the way. Yeah. Oh, mate. So proud of her, Water way. has gone incredibly berserk. Yeah, she right? just won a Grammy. She just, there we go. Mm-hmm. She just won it. And before she won this Grammy, she was the sweetheart mm-hmm. that everybody was bigging up because she had a, she's 22 years old. Yeah, yeah. She's got this global, globally yeah. acclaimed song. Global song, yeah. Mate. Yeah. Do you know the criticism that she's getting for getting that Grammy? Wow. And I'm like, yo, this, wow. this always is a milestone in your, in your, in your growth and your progress. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When the masses start immediately coming against you, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's how you know you have graduated from the bottom and gone up. 100%. 100%. You, you, you know, you <laughs> it's know, crazy. Listen, you know what we used to say? <laughs> when, I wanted, when, when, I was, when my aspirations were to just be an actor, yeah, yeah. I said, I can't wait till they call me gay. I was like, I was like, wait, what? I, like, I can't, I can't wait till they call me gay. Okay, because when they care about who I'm sleeping with, I made it. Boom, I made it. When you start caring about my personal life, shit, that's when I know I made it because it's like that means they're talking. You okay, know? shit, you went there, there so is. let's go there. You let's went there, go let's there. go there. Let's go you, there. You, you've worked with Jamie Foxx. You've worked with all of these. Hey, Hollywood wait, 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 wait! <laughs> Don't say that right behind <laughs> what I just said. <laughs> You got to separate that shit. Like, what are we doing right now? You know, let's go there. Jamie Foxx like, what the fuck? <laughs> let me land. Let me land. You know what I mean? Land this plane, bro. Like, 
Hey, it's ruckus right now. <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, Jamie, don't fucking see this shit. Uh, shit. There is no correlation <laughs> between what we were just talking about. There's no off-screen conversation. I am officially dead. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my word. <laughs> you know... <laughs> You hear so many rumors yeah. about what happens in Hollywood. And mm-hmm. oh man, I was literally crying tears from that, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> All these rumors about what happens in Hollywood and the things that you got to do to yeah. be able to make it yeah. to, the, to, to it's that not, level. It's not that, but go ahead. Tell, t- <laughs> I want you to tell it. I want you to tell it because, uh, because there is, people yeah. are out there really yeah. truly believing. You yeah. got yeah, yeah. to sell your soul. You've got to do, the, you got to become gay. You got to suck some, some yeah. shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, something yeah yeah, yeah. I, so <laughs> I, i'll say this i'll say this i've seen things i've heard things thank god i've never had to be a part of anything and if i did have to be a part of anything i wouldn't have that success because that's not the lane that i would choose all right so you, you when mm-hmm. you say you've seen things mm-hmm. I, I need you to be a little bit more Specific, especially because mm-hmm. I asked a very specific question. Absolutely. So Absolutely. you don't have to name names or whatever. Of course. But I want what I want to find out is, you know, I always say that I always hear people say they don't want to be in the part in, in that dark field in Hollywood mm-hmm. and da 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 da. But I feel like, especially if you feel like you're a person of light, right? How will there be light if you don't go into so-called darkness? One hundred. What? What? One hundred. <laughs> you, you see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I want yeah, us. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you're here because yeah. I want us to shed some light. That yo, absolutely. It, it really isn't. Well, I'll, I'll I'll say this: once you reach a certain level in Hollywood, the curtain is pulled back for you to take a peek. All right. Um, once you take a peek and people know you've taken that peek and you see what's back there, you expect it to participate. However, there are certain levels of viewing that curtain. You know, there is, oh, I had a movie that made a hundred million in the box office. Okay. You don't have a career until you start making some white people some money. Right, right. Bottom right. line. Yes. All right. That's as candid as I can be. Correct. Until you start making some white people some money, you don't have a career in yeah. Hollywood. So when I started making other people some money, it's like you get invited to the parties, you get invited to the yachts, and, and you're and valuable. You're, now. You're, 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 you're an asset yes. at that particular time. Now, when you start seeing some of your favorite celebrities have lifestyles that you didn't know they had, it's a shock to you, but everybody on the other side of the curtain already knew. Right. You might have heard through the grapevine, read in a tabloid or whatever. Now you're just seeing it. Yeah. You know, in real in real life, you know? And so it's and, and it's it's basic stuff. It's like, oh, okay, I didn't know he was gay. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, I didn't know she swung that way. Oh, okay. You right. know what I mean? Oh, I didn't know they were doing a three way. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah. just it is what it is, you know? I mean, because you know, I'm sure everybody does crazy stuff in their own personal right. lives, but um, you know, we, you know, you see the drugs, you see the different way the, the lifestyles, you know, you go in certain parties and they take your phone. Yes. You know, they yes. take your cell phone. So it's like there's 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 no evidence. As they should. Yeah. You know, they think when about, I would have house parties and pool parties in my house in England, I'll take your phone too. Take your phone. You know? People want to be have, have they privacy have and a, enjoy they their They want to have a good time yeah, and, and be able to let loose. And you, you have to think about people. Let's just give uh let's 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 name two child stars. Let's say Michael Jackson and Justin Bieber. Right. All right. Came in this game as kids. Their entire life, they were never a kid. Yeah. Because you grew up in a very adult industry. Um, Kids don't run the industry. Other adults run the industry. Mm. So they're running around with other adults seeing adult shit go yeah. down so with that being said you're they're forced to grow up very very fast yeah. i am so glad that i didn't get success at a young age right because i would have probably mishandled it i yep. probably would have fumbled it i probably would have lost it i probably yep. like you know who knows i, yep. I could have been in trouble somewhere like who knows yep. but you get the level of success when god wants you to get that level of success and I mean, I'm, a, I'm appreciative of God's timing. And with that being said, I've never been approached indecently. So I'm thankful for that. I don't know if it's because I haven't hit that next level of success yet, 
or I'm not deemed as valuable enough. But I've never been approached by Illuminati. I've never <laughs> been approached to do something strange for a piece of change. Like, like I've never, I've, I've never been approached Does that like happen? that. Is there it, an Illuminati? It, it, I mean, it, I'm I'm not gonna. I'll say that I know that that exists. Yeah. It hasn't existed in my world yet. Right. So, with that being said, I, like I said, I know it exists. It's there. There is you know, a group of people that run the world, you know, we'll leave it at that. Fair, fair. However, I, I've never been approached to where I've been given an ultimatum to where you do this and you'll get this. I haven't yeah. gotten that yeah. to that, to that Cause, status Because, you know, Cat Williams has been talking, man. He you know talking. what I'm saying? And he, he rocked the internet. He, you been know? And he came for everybody. He came for everybody. He came for everybody from you know? Steve Harvey to Kevin Hart yeah. to yeah. Cedric the Entertainer yeah. to yeah. whoever, you name it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And apparently there is this meeting you get invited to um, where you're asked to participate in all of these ungodly shit. And it's only with your... Uh, with your submission to those protocols that you're able to rise to the next level. I personally have never really believed that. That's not with everybody. <clears throat> That's, yeah, I don't, it's, I don't it's, believe it's, that. It's, it's not with everybody um, because I'm too close to the fire. Too many powerful mm -hmm. people right. that I have been in deep conversation with, sober and inebriated, to where I would know. Right. And the people that I'm extremely close with, they love God. Right. And they have a foundation. And I don't think that they're weak enough to be rocked in that way unless they want it to rock in that exactly. way. Exactly. So, you know, there's very well may possibly be individuals that, you know, not going to tell me, you know. But I, I think that I'm close enough with the, the people that I'm close with. To where I would know something. Yeah, I, I, and, I, hear, um, that, I hear that completely. Yeah, so, I, I think you know, sometimes a lot of times people throw a lot of shit around. Absolutely. And you have to. Absolutely. Um, because there's a myth. <laughs> there's a myth to Hollywood. Yeah. You know, so, there's so, a mystery yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. yeah so 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 <laughs> let, let me just throw this out there. So you watch a movie and you say, "Oh my God, how did they get that car to flip?" Oh, movie tricks. Everything is smoke and mirrors. Right. Everything is smoke yeah, and mirrors. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's it's the mystery, the the, the facade. You, you don't. You're never gonna know how this operates. How is this person making this much money for the? It's 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 Hollywood for a reason mm. because everybody can't be a part of it. Yeah. If everybody could be a part of it and everybody could just lift up the veil and see what's behind the curtain, it's just, it doesn't it leave the. It wouldn't be a mystery. It wouldn't mystery be a club. mystery. Yeah, you know? it wouldn't be so, an exclusive club. Yeah, anymore. so it's it's like mm -hmm. stop trying to figure it out. Take it as entertainment. All of these relationships. So this person is with that person. It's, it's like a lot of these stuff is curated. Yeah. You know, by publicists. Okay, put him together. Okay. Oh, hey, 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 John. Hey, I know you got a new client over there. Can we put them with this model and make it look all of this? You know. Yeah. And it's yeah. like you know everybody banging everybody. You know, it's 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 Hollywood, it's just man. The way it is. It's just the way it is. Yeah. And if you are, if you. I'll tell this to every woman, young woman watching this. If you are getting with a young man who is coming up in the Hollywood industry, don't don't even try it. Mm. If he's starting to become successful, don't even try it. Why's that? Because you cannot compete with what he has to deal with. Right. You want, oh no, you have to be no. This man has to go out with people, hang out with models, be on the boat, be on the yacht, because you have to be seen. It's all about networking. It's all about charisma. People want to be around the star. And it's like, you can't be handcuffed. You can't go out. You can't do. I mean, look, look at look at what happened to Jonathan Majors. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as far as we know, he could have been texting Megan Good in the car, but... Absolutely. The the old girlfriend and, 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 and his words got misconstrued. And I want to be able to just, you know, advocate on his behalf because he he was telling his girl that I am rising to levels that only very few come. I need you to be my Coretta, meaning I need you to just be my support. Facts. I need you to not act <clears throat> crazy when we go out. I need you to be calm 
and be my support, yeah. be my peace when I when I when I step into these rooms and and I don't need you to be blowing my phone up when I'm coming home. Look, I am doing something major. Yo, but I only got one shot. But, but but this is not even just the Hollywood story. Yeah, this is the story of anybody who's coming up, any mm -hmm. man who's coming mm -hmm. up. In mm. success in the world mm. Because the world is so different now mm. You're mm. expected to go out mm. Your network is literally mm. your net worth exactly. You're expected to go out and network You're mm. expected to be available and accessible right. To certain degrees right. To be able to go out and be visible right. It is that visibility But a that, woman is going to be a woman And they want that see, attention and, 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 and it's hard yeah. It's hard finding the balance yeah. Because of also the opportunities mm -hmm. Right To be unfaithful and whatever mm -hmm. else is also mm -hmm. so rife and so accessible. Right, right, right. You don't right. even have to go after it anymore. That's what trust comes in at. Oof. That's that's what trust comes in at because guess what? If I have the option to go out and be unfaithful to you, I'm going to do it regardless if you're blowing my phone up or if you're not. Right. I'm, I can turn it off for that 15 minutes and say, oh, my phone died <laughs> and finish what I need to do and say, ah, oh, I just I just got the got, got, got the charge. I went into a restaurant <laughs> and plugged it in and Superman, oh, just to get your phone call. It's like, come on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like it don't matter if you keep blowing me up, keep checking my location, seeing if I post something on Instagram. Like, stop I hear you. because you're driving your own self crazy yeah people are responsible for themselves the right. only person that you can control is yourself mm -hmm. and if, if if you feel that you're you have to call and and and, and blow up somebody's phone for them to be faithful to you you don't need to be you don't you don't need to be I, there you don't I, need to be I, there i agree you don't need to be there and and sometimes also you need to take some time and check yourself and work on yourself and work on yourself because 100%. you know we are in and as everybody wants a made man <laughs> mm, mm, Everybody wants a made man these days. Mm, Every woman wants a made man. But they and, don't know how they're made. Aha. Oof. And you don't understand. A lot of you want things that you're not ready for. Absolutely. Right? Because you're not the only person who wants that. Mm, right? Mm. You it's, know what? It's, I'm, one, I'm one of them people. <laughs> right, right. I, I'm one of them people. And I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> I thought I was ready for fame and I wasn't. Yep. Yep. I got on a TV show and I got nominated for an Emmy yeah. twice. Yeah. Um, and she just won one recently, Niecy Nash. That's yeah. like, she's like my god sister. She's my daughter's godma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, super close. We've been rocking since I was like 24. Oh my God. Yeah. 24. 20 I'm years, 44 bro. now. I've been rocking years. with Niecy. Tw Niecy, we've been rocking 20 years. <laughs> oh my God. And so we've been rocking for a while before Niecy could even get a drama audition. Mm. We've been rocking. And she used to help me with my auditions. And, um, she used to always tell me how to move, mm. you know, um, how how to how to how to maneuver through this industry. And when I got nominated for an Emmy, I realized that I didn't really like the fame. Mm. You know, you get a lot of fake phone calls. You get a lot of fake people coming up to you. And it, it, it just got to the point where it's just like, I don't like how this feel. I like going to the grocery store. Right. You know, I don't never yeah. want to be too famous to where yeah. I can't go out and do regular stuff. And, yeah. and in L.A., it, there's a filter. And I, what I mean by that is, is I could go to the grocery store and I could see Denzel. So it's like, mm, whatever. Mm -hmm. So they really don't care about mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. But you step out of L.A., and you go into them consumer cities, Chicago, St. Louis, down south in different places. It's like, oh, you're on that show. You're, and it's like, whoa, bro, I'm just trying to eat, man. My mom is, you, you know. Yeah, and so yeah. it's very intrusive. Yeah. So with that being said, I, I, I just I didn't like that everybody knew who I was and yeah. I, and, and, and I wasn't even as big as like a Chappelle or somebody yeah, like yeah, that. So yeah. I can only imagine what they go through. Right. And so that's when I started saying, let me see what's up with this writing and, and being behind the scenes. And I realized that behind the scenes makes a whole lot more money, <sighs> you know, a whole lot more power, you know? And so I said, ah, I'm cool on the acting until I want to. Every once in a while, I get that mm, like I want to get get, yeah. get into the in front of the camera, kind of like Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, I've always wanted yeah. Mark Wahlberg's career. You yeah. jump in front of the camera whenever when you want wants. to, but guess what? I'm producing Entourage. I'm producing this movie. I'm producing. You know, that's that's why I love the business. Yes. of the business. Yes. You know, and that's what that's what drives me. That's <laughs> I what gets absolutely me love it because for me, you know, 
I had a TV show in the UK from okay. 2008 to 2013. Okay, okay. And we had everybody on there from Maze to like all of these American guys were yeah. coming. There's yeah, a music yeah, yeah. chat show. Okay. <clears throat> and I didn't know any any better about television other than being in front of the camera. Mm, mm. Um, until 2012, I wanted to get my show syndicated okay. globally. It was in the UK. I wanted it around the world. And I would call all the major distributors and nobody would was interested in touching my show. Mm. So I literally picked up the phone and started making these calls myself. I would call up broadcasters. And mm. that was in 2012. By the end of 2012, the show was in 60 countries. It was all over Africa. I'd go on holiday in Barbados, Boom. Jamaica. Everybody recognized Boom. me. My, 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 my dad, who never talked about me before. Now everybody <laughs> knew me in Ghana. So they would, he'd go out talking my name. I love it. And what I had created was a distribution company. Ah. I didn't know that there was any such thing. Okay. So I would go to, you know, I had went to the likes of Dietrich Haddon, Kirk Franklin, all of these guys who were making movies at the time, yeah. Yeah. who I was close with. And I was like, look, uh, at the time, um, Preachers of LA had just been produced. Um, and I was like, let, let me get your guys, you guys stuff outside of, yeah. outside of um, US. And so I started doing distribution. Distribution was making me more money actually than doing the presenting. Boom. So in 2013, I came off screen and I've been focusing on distribution yeah. ever since, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> literally. Yeah. So there are so many different careers and so many different yeah. avenues to be able to make money in the is industry from even behind the scenes. 100%. Right now we, from Paramount to Lionsgate to Tyler Perry Studios to all of that, we, we represent all of their stuff. That's amazing. Outside of the US. That's amazing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, yeah. But there are, there's all these careers yeah. that, you know, because I realized as well, I, I was like, you know what, for, for, for me, the fame, it's not something that I pursue. I, in order to get my message across, more people are going to know it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to become familiar with more mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. which would mm -hmm. mean that there would be a mm -hmm. level of notoriety that yeah. comes along, yeah, yeah, along, yeah. along with that. Absolutely. Now I'm comfortable to accept and receive that yeah. because... I'm in a different space of my life where for I'm sure. comfortable. For with sure, me. for sure. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with me. When when I was doing the TV show and a million people were watching me a week and I have yeah. to go and catch the bus, it was a little bit more uncomfortable then. You, you know, <laughs> in, 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 in piggybacking off of that, think about it. <laughs> Mike Tyson went broke. Mad, didn't it? Only thing he had was his name. <laughs> So he starts slapping his name on things. Yeah. Imagine, imagine the whole world knowing, mm. you know, excuse my language. Imagine the whole world knowing that you fucked up. It's bad, isn't it? That you blew all of your money. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's as embarrassing as the whole world watching Kim Kardashian's entire date life. Right. right. You look like a, a whore if you're watching yeah, it yeah, on yeah. TV. Yeah. But look at the average 25 to 35 year old. They date. It's two, three guys a year. That's all she was doing. But mm. she looks like, you know, but at the same time, you know, um, I, I just really feel that as an actor, you are acting, but the money doesn't match the fame. Yeah. And I can't go back to my restaurant job yeah you know after i was just Oof. on tv you know nbc Oof. and it's like i go back to work like can i take your order please it's that it's, painful it's, in it's, between it's, it's, it's that painful in between and so like this is when i started writing and yeah. i'm like okay let me write a script let me yeah. see if i could take this into another direction yeah. let me see if i could tap into another part of the industry to where it's like you don't have that painful in between yeah man. it's uh it's it's a it's a it's a reality that it's a that reality that anybody and everybody is going to face though any visionary anybody yeah. who has a vision because you you have to arrive at the vision before you arrive at the vision For sure for sure. Right. For sure. And when you've arrived at the vision internally yeah. and the rest of this material world hasn't caught up yet, ah. it is the great discomfort. Ah, That's absolutely. where that disparity, yes. literally you wake up and you're yes. burning up and you're vexed. Yes. yes. Because I am who I am, but you can't see who the fuck you I am, but I'm not I who I used to be. <laughs> you know what? Drake says a line <sighs> and he says, it's crazy when you are who you think you are. Do you know how much I love that line? You, you, don't, you don't understand the power Yo. in that line. Like when you look in the mirror yeah. and you see something and then the world finally catches up, that's powerful, yeah, bro. Man. You know, yeah. I had that moment. Yeah. Riding down Sunset, yeah, and 
Five years ago, I saw Beyonce on the same billboard sitting on top of the Kodak Theater where the Oscars happens. Yeah. And she had the big Pepsi billboard. And I used to always say in my head, I'm going to have that billboard one day. I'm going to have that billboard one day. I'm going to have that billboard one day. And to ride down the street and to see Rambo on that billboard. Isn't that some shit? It was just like. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like you have no idea what it took for me to get there. Absolutely. And um, to do it in a way to where I was able to bring my brother, you know, um, Domaine Radcliffe along. um, And we partnered and did that whole thing together. It was just a beautiful, beautiful moment. And shout out to Domaine and Afion Crockett. They got an amazing comedy coming out uh, that Domaine, this is his directorial debut. So I'm so proud of my brother. But it's it's. It's amazing to hit these milestones Absolutely. and then help each other to keep climbing. You know, it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Bro. Listen, we, we can keep going about these gems yeah. all day long. You've got an exciting project that's coming up. Yes. I want you to talk about this project. I want you to talk about what inspired it. Mm. And um, and the world is going to see it soon. Uh, the world is definitely going to see it soon. <laughs> the connecting between two of us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, well, I got a project called Vision Central coming out. Uh, it's one of the reasons why um, I came to Dubai as quick as I did. Yeah. Vision Central is essentially a bromance mixed with a little bit of a love story that crosses the cultures. That was my main objective. I wanted to cross the cultures to where I had an American man fall in love with an Arabic heiress. Yeah. And on screen, they have to have that uncomfortable conversation as to why you're not good enough for my daughter. You know, and there's a line um, that the that that was written in that particular movie and this guy is wealthy, wealthy. And he says, it doesn't matter how wealthy I am in America. My status doesn't matter in your country. Yeah. So it's essentially saying, I could have all the money in the world, but I'm still a yeah. whatever you want to call me. Right. You know what I mean? And that's a lot of a lot of the the anxiety that us as black brothers walk around with in America. Absolutely. It's like it don't matter how successful you get, you still a Yeah. You know, and so with that being said, I wanted to build in Dubai because I didn't feel like a yeah here yeah i felt like a person here yeah. i felt like i I'm, I'm contributing to society i was brought out here by some of the royal family so with that being said it's like we want you here we yeah. want you to help build and, and to be able to partner with um the city of abu dhabi and uae it was just a match made in heaven they welcomed us with open arms so vision central will be somewhere soon yeah uh, i'm not gonna say where but it'll be somewhere soon yes. and I'm, I'm really looking forward to the world seeing this project and developing more in the uae and in um saudi arabia absolutely listen brother you're doing some amazing stuff it's inspiring thank you it's inspiring there's that the, i'm glad that there is a position for us now. absolutely you know what i mean absolutely. and and we are going out there fearless and we're taking the balls by the horns 100 you know what i'm saying and 100%. we're here and we're producing not stereotypical pro- projects, Absolutely. but just high quality projects that you can sit on any platform. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? It's Absolutely. about that time. Absolutely. It's about that time. So keep working, brother. Man, thank Appreciate you, man. you for coming on here thank and you sharing for your story. Me, man. Blessings, man. Elijah Blessings. Long. Listen, guys, thank you for <laughs> thank you for sticking with me. Another episode of the Moving Mountains podcast. Same time next week. Let's do it. All new episodes drops every Monday and Wednesday, available on all platforms.